Hey everybody, this is Josh, just popping in here at the beginning of the episode to let you know that we now have a Patreon. That's right, patreon.com slash yet. There you'll find a bunch of cool tiers that you can subscribe and help support the show with. Uh, some of the benefits include a shout out in every episode for your social media, small business, online store, whatever. Uh, we also have um, opportunities to join our Discord fan server and chat with the cast. Uh, We also have um, access to uh, full unedited um, sessions, so you can hear everything that we do over the course of the three to four hours that we record. Um, It's a lot of fun, so be sure to check that out. That's patreon.com slash are we dead yet? All right, let's get to the show. Sinister Secrets and Dark Truths mystical creatures and magical powers, dark dungeons and enlightened paths, all lead us to ask that one question as time marches onward. Are we dead yet? You're in this hallway full of doors that lead into these little single sleeper rooms. Uh, You got the staircase at the end of this hallway, and you've got the scratching and clawing coming from inside the sealed room, the half sealed room. But it sounds like you guys want to take a a rest of some sort. Um, How do you guys want to? Can we take a long rest? (laughs) Not right here. Well, not right here. Nap right in the middle of a dungeon. Hell yeah. Just pick a corner. <laughs> well, let me take a look at these maps. I mean, I am a cat. I could just, you know, curl up on something somewhere and, and be happy. And I'm an owl, so as long as I have a little thing to climb up on and perch and hang upside... No, owls don't hang upside down. Sorry. I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad. I was like... <laughs> it is having an identity crisis. It doesn't know who they are right now, okay? But yes, uh, I would like a rest if we can. Yeah. Yes. For as long as possible. We can check the maps to see if there's anywhere. Yeah, there's one of well, the rooms uh, right next to the room that we threw the fireball in. It's got uh, a bed in it. <laughs> because, uh, well, oh. it's, <laughs> they're, they're all tiny folk. Mount, chicka, they're, mount, wow. But yeah, no, I mean, up. we could all fit in the bed, but it's also, you know, enclosed room, one door, so we can, like, safely sleep with a watch. I was going to say, with all those, uh, the the cultists' rooms. Um, You've also got the room where you fought the seer in. I mean, that's just got a couple piles of ashes in there. That's not a bad idea. And that room has no windows. One entrance, no windows? That sounds safe. Okay. Good enough, yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah, let's go there. Uh, Sure. You guys head in there real quick and take your long rest. I just need, all right, two watches for the night. Well, Unless you're gonna, I'll cast uh, alarm. Okay, where are you casting alarm at? The door, like the entrance. Okay, one. the entrance. Okay, I wasn't sure if you were talking the entrance of the room or the entrance of the hallway outside or something. Uh, I mean, it, it, if we're at the dead end of a hallway. Yeah, then the hallway. If it's a one, one way thing. Yep, it was. Okay. Yep. Let's do the hallway. Yeah, uh, because I'm, th- I'm thinking they could bust the door in and get like. 16 attacks on a dude before we yeah. can react. Yeah. Let's do the let's do the hallway. Yeah, you guys come back into the room with the uh where you beat the seer. You've got four statues still in one piece and uh we'll say five of the benches that didn't get broken up. It you cast alarm to warn you of any dangers or anything. So, yeah. Do you put do you have anyone watch the door? Or do you guys all just try and get comfortable on these benches and fall asleep or what? Uh, Vora will take a watch. Okay. Uh, I guess Ebris will also take a watch. Sure. Do you guys do anything with the door or just leave it as is? I think um, closed. Oh, well, yeah, we could close it and barricade it. There's pews. I think just in case, you know, so we have time to get ready if there is something that is coming. Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, Vora, you're taking the first watch, so go ahead and roll me a perception check. 17. 
the night passes pretty quietly for the most part. You do hear in the distance the shattering of glass coming from somewhere in the castle. Nice. Damn. The hunt begins. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't hear the alarm sound or anything else happen after that. And other than that, it's a pretty peaceful little four-hour watch. Ebris, go ahead and roll yourself a perception check as well. I've got 20. Unnatural 20. Un- unnatural, you said? Yep. Okay. You also hear some noises in the castle. Uh, you hear, like, the rending of metal or, like, the, the tearing, especially with you being a, 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 a former uh, clan crafter, you, you know what, what it sounds like when, when steel starts to fail. You hear just, like, almost like a steel door being ripped off of its hinges. Uh-oh. And you hear that about three times. Uh-oh. 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 But no ringing from the hallway? No ringing from the hallway. But yeah, you do hear that sound. So we've All got right. three slots to deal with. Well, I'm level nine now. I got full health. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, you don't hear too much more. You do also hear the sound of like stone shattering outside the castle. I mean, you are just tuned into this to this building. Also, there's just not a lot of ambient noise, so you can you can hear quite a bit. But yeah, you hear almost like stones like shattering, kind of like how it sounded when you guys smashed up those uh, statues earlier. That doesn't sound good. No. Sounds like a legion of little monster bitches coming. Well, how many statues did we leave around? Just the two that were out in front of the castle. Okay. In front of the doors. And the four that are inside the room, but... Yeah, we can see those. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, the rest uh, goes pretty pretty smoothly. Uh, you guys are are all rested and, and ready to go. Full health and full spell slots. <laughs> Yay! Ready to die. <laughs> that we have to use on all this bad shit that just woke up. Eh, maybe. Yeah. And I'm going to warn the party. The beasties have been active overnight. No alarm, but plenty of noises. That's not good. Sounds like they've been tearing the place up. Do you think they're looking for us? No. <laughs> I find it hard to doubt that they don't know where we are. Maybe we'll just stay in here. Let them fight it out. And then we'll sneak out of here when it's all over. So Chester's um, plan is basically Sean's from Sean of the Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Get the pot to have a pint. <laughs> Wait for all, this, Wait for to all this to blow over. I mean, it makes sense. We've got some monsters that were locked up mixed in with some monsters that were running around free. I'm sure they don't like each other. They're going to fight it out. Mm, I haven't heard any fighting mm. overnight. I feel like that's... What- but I feel like that's wishful thinking. Yeah, sorry, Chester. I think they, uh, I think they're on the same side. Well, do you guys have any ideas? Everest isn't going to say anything, but the grip is going to tighten on his hammer. <laughs> oh, I guess we can do that, too. The fun way. I, I was just hoping, you know, maybe we could you know, avoid anyone, anyone almost dying again. Now, we could try going, uh, outside there isn't any like windows in this room right no no but windows I, I could like stone shape or shatter a hole in the wall and we could like repel down the side of the castle if you we really wanted idea. to that's actually not a bad idea do we want to like but do we want to go back into the castle or do we want to leave the castle yeah because we got to get to that room with the locked door we got both the amulets oh right we could leave and then come back. Come back with the crew? Yeah. But Ebris is more on the on the side of uh, finishing it. Yeah. Well, actually, many people got injured in that, in that one accident. So it's been eight hours and I don't know, what's David's name? David's Artie. Artie, Artie's compatriots left to go get back up. That is True. what I was going to say was we already have reinforcements coming. Mm-hmm. Um, I say we push forward. 
go big or go home, man. <laughs> Are we dead yet? I mean, that mm-hmm. is our... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That is what we are here to do. We are here to die or fight. Yeah. Or <laughs> fight and or die. We're here to die or try fighting. <laughs> um, well, I think that we can. Um, yeah, I think that settles it, though. I mean. If you want, I was going to cast Pass Without a Trace anyways for a bit. Because if they're still looking for us. And I'm guessing we want to stealth around, right? That's Probably not a bad idea. That would be probably awesome. don't want people to uh, know where we are, like in two seconds. <laughs> Especially with Eberus and his uh, heavy armor. Yeah, yeah. Pass without trace adds a plus ten to your stealth roll, doesn't it? Plus yeah. ten bonus to dexterity. Mm-hmm. Yep, stealth checks and can't be tracked except by magical means. Oh yeah. All right, yeah. Let's like sneak out and try and ambush these guys. Yeah. You guys are wanting to sneak down downstairs and see what you guys can see? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. I'll have, instead of making all of you roll a stealth check, uh, who is going to take the front and who is going to take the rear? Master Hunter Chester will take the front. I'm a cat. I'm good at hunting things. Sure. Totally. And Vora, with his uh, ranged fireballness, will uh, take up the rear. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Both of you roll stealth checks for me then. And we have Pass Without Trace? Yeah, so plus 10. Oh, shit. This means oh, you can't shit. fail. You can't fail this. I mean, you no, can't. No, no, I'm getting kidding me. I'm getting plus 20 to this roll because of Pass Without a Trace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you have a what? One in 20 chance? A, a 5% chance of failing this then? I rolled yeah. a nat one. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. It's okay. <laughs> can 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 I give him like ten points off of my roll? <laughs> Actually, could I could give him my inspiration, couldn't I? Uh, I don't think I don't I don't think so. No. Um, let me. I can look it up real quick. Chris, yes, uh, a player with inspiration can award it to another player. Sweet. All right. So if then... you would like to use that on on Vora's roll, feel free. <laughs> In Me. in mid fall, as Vora's like tripping, uh, Everest is gonna like recite a really quick inspirational like speech to him. Let's hear it. Let's <laughs> just hear it. transfer my. I guess he would just call him Vora. It's like, don't let gravity overcome you, Vora. You are the master here. Do it. And uh, give him my point of inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Gravity's a lie. Science has been lying to you your whole life. You don't have to fall to the ground now. The earth is flat. Gravity's a lie. Illuminati. 20. 31. 31. All right. And John? And Chester? I got a 37. Oh, yeah. You guys are perfect. And um, by the grace of Everest's speech, as mid-trip, I catch my balance by the tips of my toes like that of a ballerina and so thank you so you come downstairs very sneaky and silently and you do kind of that scooby-doo thing lots of scooby-doo references today uh (laughs) where you all kind of poke your head around the corner you know one on top of the uh, the other you see looking back into the the main lobby room which david i don't know if you've seen this room but it's in the maps chat the maps it's the room with the two spiral staircases So you poke around, you see the tables that had had food on them are broken and scattered. Like the food is just scattered all over the room now. The benches here have been broken up and torn up. And laying on the floor, breathing slightly, but clearly beaten down, is the red slot that you had seen downstairs in the jail cell. Hmm. Is it napping or is it all beat up? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it looks beat up. It looks scratched up, clawed up. It has a little bit of blood coming out of its, like, like wounds on its arms and stuff. Like, like it's going to get up angry, beat up, or it's going to, like, die soon, beat up? I mean, if you're wondering, you can make a medicine check to see it, sure. how superficial the wounds are or not. Let's see. Where is it? Oh, there we go. Uh, 19. 19. Uh, yeah, no, some of these wounds look really deep. There's a pretty big gash kind of near its uh, near its collarbone area or where a collarbone would be on a on a human. 
and that that wound is bleeding pretty profusely. This thing looks like just on death's door. <laughs> I someone did a number on this one. Oh, Chester, Chester, yeah, go finish it off. Uh, what what if there's something else around though? We got your back. Maybe maybe throw a rock at it, see if it moves or something happens. I'll I'll just go do it quickly, I guess. Yeah, put it out of its misery. And uh, Chester is going to uh, <laughs> sneaky sneak on over to this uh, half dead slot. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, you rolled a thirty seven. I think we'll just keep that same roll. I'm okay with that. Your 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 stealth roll is going to be some other ridiculous <laughs> number anyway. Probably, yeah. So yeah, you uh you you reach the slot over there, and it kind of opens its eye, but it it can't really make any effort to to get you as you are next to it. I don't know how Chester feels, but you know if this were any other animal, maybe you'd feel a little bit of sympathy for it because it almost looks sad. Probably, yeah. You know. Uh, this this creature did not think it would end its uh, existence this way. Well, um, I guess it's, its eyes are still open, right? Yeah. It's so looking Chester, at you, but it, it's not making any movements to defend itself or anything. Chester is going to uh, gently paw its eye closed and uh, <laughs> finish <laughs> this, like, disgusting toad monster. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to gently paw the eyes closed and lean in and whisper... If I had one, I'd give you a saucer of milk and then slit the creature's throat. Yeah, I mean, that that does it. <laughs> it bleeds out there on the floor pretty pathetically. It almost it almost looks like maybe it, it got into a fight with one of its compatriots and it lost. The little the little red slot is no more. <laughs> <laughs> and by little, I mean big because they're they're pretty, pretty large. Average. They're like nine feet tall. Dude. Yeah, especially compared Disgusting. to us. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> it's like Lord of the Rings fighting the cave troll or something. <laughs> but you're in this room now. Um All right. You you guys broke up all the statues, so that trap is gone. You just got the door. Well, which way to the uh or is the is the door with the two keys in this room? Yeah, that's the big stone door. Got it. Well, I guess yeah. we're opening that. Yeah. Yeah, I think we should uh, get through there. Yeah, two of you just pop the the little worm-shaped amulets into the into the S-shaped holes. You make it sound so easy. It is. It, it's that easy. <sighs> okay. Uh, the the door. Yeah. How, how high <laughs> are these holes in the wall? <laughs> no, I guess that's true. We're, we're I, vertically challenged. Yeah. No, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, because my my daughter's three feet tall. She can reach the door knob. They're they're, they're normal. We They're gotta tippy toe size. just a little bit. Yeah, maybe you, if you send Chester or something over there, maybe he'll need a little a little boost. But I think almost I mean, any Chester's of you can... like toddler size. Yeah, Chester and it. I we combine together. You see, he goes on my <laughs> shoulders, and bam, we're normal sized. We become one. Exactly. <laughs> like the uh, like the robot monsters in Power Rangers. Totally. Yeah, just like <laughs> the robots in Power Rangers. <laughs> The stone slab covering the door slides down into the ground. Those runes light up that say, beware those who enter here, there be monsters. This was where the statues were going to all break open and you'd have to fight a swarm of those Gru, but <laughs> you guys are smart. <laughs> um, <laughs> the one smart thing we've done so far. As you're looking at this door, you can't really see into the room that it leads into. Uh, there's almost like a gray sort of film or almost like a like a gray mist that obscures any view from the door. All right, let's turn around now. I know exactly what this is, and we haven't rested <laughs> a bonfire yet. What? <laughs> Fog wall. <laughs> yeah, but John, we're true. We're true Souls players. We're gonna. We're I know we're gonna see what it anyways. is anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys right. enter or exit? Can, or? can I, guess I? So. Can I wait? Can I shoot an arrow through? The of fog, course. just to see what happens. Sure. Um, I want to like before she shoots it, touch the tip of the arrow and cast light on it. Oh, oh smart! Yeah. Cool. Oh, that is smart. <laughs> Big brain plays going on here. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the arrow flies through that's bright light, and it just passes through this gray material, 
and goes on to the other side, but you can't see it once it disappears behind the veil. Hmm. All right. But nothing like happens to her. No like noises or anything. Nope. And it, does it appear that it's like just a wall of fog, or is it like the entire room is filled with it? Maybe fog was the wrong word to use. It's 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 uh, um, like a gray mass. Yeah, like I'm trying to think of something similar in fiction, and I can't really think of it. Like the mist? No, it's okay. It's <laughs> it, 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 it's it's similar to sort of what happened to the mirror in uh, the Matrix when it got all. Watery. Uh, uh, I don't know this reference. Oh, it's okay. It, it looks like a wall made of water in the doorway is what you're kind of but trying it, to get at, right? Yeah, but it's gray and it it looks thicker than water. Yeah. Okay. okay. This shit sounds sketchy. I don't like it. Yeah. I guess the wind definitely isn't going to do anything, but oh, maybe man. like a detect good and evil or something. Um, Ooh, what about a detect magic? I have that. detect magic. You want to burn a spell slot for us? I guess so. Bitches. No I'm kidding. I mean, I'm guessing it's magic, but you know. I mean, you're not wrong. I think it's safe to assume. Oh, that's that's right. We I guess we we can assume it's magic, but that won't tell us what it is. Can no, I, it's. Can I roll an Arcana in it? Um. Yeah, you can Just do to that see as if well. I recall any info regarding something similar to this. Sure. So we. I'll assist. I was going to say may I as well with the uh, as the resident magic person here. 14. 14. Yeah, it kind of reminds you of a abjuration uh, spell that you've seen used before around the guild called private sanctum. Basically just used to sort of ward an area from magic, from any kind of interference or spying or uh, anything like that. Yeah. Uh, so it just keeps magic from peering into the area or affecting the area. Magic and other, like, yeah, it, it, it's also, it can ward stuff, but also, like, it, it, it can stop, you know, physical. All in one ward. Or, yep. Cool. Oh, so it can physically stop us? It could. No, no, that, that can't happen, but it can stop, like, objects and stuff. That's why the arrow just went through and you couldn't see it. It stops it stops you from being able to see through it is what I mean. Mm, okay. Mm, yeah. okay. Like a, so it's like a veil. Yeah. So it's oh. a fog wall. Yeah. <laughs> I have a dispel magic. I could use it, but if it's not going to hurt us, uh, ever through since it. more of the mind <sighs> to just like YOLO right through it. Save the slot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, let's go. I was going to say, I know what it is now, so I'm just going to walk through it. Same. Sure. Yeah. Let's all follow suit. Yep, yep. Cool. Could all of you make intelligence saving throws? Oh, <laughs> there it is. Is it against there magic? There it is. <laughs> oh, man. Could oh, you repeat is... yourself, David? Is it against magic? It is against magic, yes. I get advantage on that roll. Nice. <sighs> oh, man. And is anyone not able to be charmed? I hope not. No, I've, I've got nothing. I don't think you yeah, have anything same. either, Zoe. Yeah, I don't think I do. Okay, just making sure. I'm worried now. That was a really bad roll. 16. Damn it. All Three. right, let's see what Nine. happens. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, that's not bad. <laughs> it's okay, Josh. I have a backup <laughs> character already, so don't worry about killing me. Same Z. You <laughs> die instantly. Y- you won't die. <laughs> there are things worse than death, Josh. There are things worse than death. You'll just turn up the party. Can I get one more? Uh, can I get everyone's roll one more time? N- Nine. I got 11. I got 11 as well. Oh, no! <laughs> I thought it was... I thought 11's okay. Like, it's like, bad It's like, it's half out. the party gonna turn on you? <laughs> Artie, you got 16? 16. And Vora? Seven. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, it's going down. So, Artie, you pass through just fine and come out the other side, and you see your friends standing there uh, next to you in the room that I'm about to post. But each of you all see different things when you enter this room. 
Oh, great. Chester, you find yourself standing in a room that is basically a large vault filled with gold coins just everywhere. Scrooge McDuck would be jealous of this vault. Oh, no. It. You enter a room full of stylish jewels, clothes, high-end goods, fit for an upscale equiqui, such as yourself. <laughs> Vora, you pass through this doorway and you're suddenly back home with your people. You see standing before you both Erds and kobolds feasting together in a large cavern used as like a great hall uh, that you remember from home and they're all toasting to you as the hero of their clan yay uh, Eberus you are back in your lonely monastery looking out over calm seas the island of Eumorus is gone and you are dressed in robes of a high priest for the tempest domain Artie you see a room just covered in blood uh, oh. You see stone. God, it really is. <laughs> you see stone chairs and benches lining this room. Aside from the blood, it would almost look like a, a temple or a, an altar that you would find anywhere upside or up up top in uh, in Trico. Uh, there's a stone altar with just bodies of cultists uh, strewn about, with a robed figure uh, sitting in the throne here, looking at you amused um, as you seem unaffected by his magic trap uh, that he placed here. But you see your friends all kind of standing there looking a bit bewildered, uh, stupefied. Dazed and confused. Yeah. Any chance on seeing their uh, reaction after walking through the uh, mess that I would also recognize what just happened to them? You can make another arcana check real quick if you want. I won't. I, I, I don't think there's any way anyone could assist you on this one, though. So. No, that's fine. Uh, 17 plus 7 is a 24. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, this almost looks like a, uh, a use of the spell um, hallucinatory terrain. Okay. I thought it was just part of the the, uh, the mist, so it's a separate spell entirely? Yep. Okay, cool. Alright, so I at least recognize that they're all, like, under an illusion. Mm-hmm. Perfect. <laughs> this robed figure he uh stands up and he just starts clapping he just says uh well i uh congratulate you on uh being able to withstand my magic very few people have uh, been able to uh do that over the years you should be very proud of yourself well i'm not one to get all caught up in uh in myself for nothing but uh thank you for that i don't suppose uh you could do me a favor here and uh, release my friends make this a fair fight in, in in time, in time. But tell me, I don't I don't recall you coming into the castle with them. How did you uh, how did you come to get here today? Oh, I bet you'd like to know that. I mean, but, it would make my my life easier, but you know. But I can't tell you just yet, man. Just in case, I gotta get out, get back in. You know. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, out. Yes, of course. Well, don't uh, don't uh, don't worry your pretty little head. I'm still going to smash it in before I go uh, go to leaving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's jump over. I want to get some reactions from each of everyone else that's stuck in their little illusions. Chester, you're in this room full of gold coins. Uh, yeah, you... so uh, Chester goes saucer eyes, takes his backpack off, tears the top open, and just starts trying to shove as much gold as he can fit into his backpack. Glorious. As you do that, you're shoveling gold into this uh this backpack of yours Artie, what you see is you see chester just start scooping nothing into his open bag and you see a bunch of like random stuff inside his open bag as he's doing this you can't get a good you know you you could try and look if you wanted to but yeah you just see a bunch of stuff jangling around in there as he's like shoveling air into into his bag can i um, maybe maybe he has something uh yeah sure perception check know. why not maybe yeah a lot of shiny stuff fuck three yeah, no, just a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> Maybe this guy just packs around his whole house in his bag. I don't know. That's kind of what it looks like. I was just looking at my uh, item list here, and it's <laughs> it's big. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad you're not running encumbrance right now. Well, no, I, I, I did the math on everything I've given you, and if I was, you'd still be, like I think, like 20 pounds shy. So you're still Oh, good. that's good. That's good. But anyway, Chester, as you're digging through these gold pieces, you suddenly see a 
uh, just a, a, a feather and then several feathers as the body of your friend it is unburied from all this gold and she's not moving Chester freezes uh, go ahead and make another intelligence save how is a 23 cool yeah you suddenly realize that wait it was just standing right next to you that that doesn't make any sense it it's fine and then as you have that realization you start to maybe realize that wait weren't you just walking into a room with all your friends and then the illusion shatters around you and you're just on the ground with your hand kind of next to your bag frozen a little bit but you suddenly start seeing the room in front of you it let's go over to you sweet you're in this room you've got all these nice high-end goods clothes jewels i mean it it looks like just a just a like like you've hit the hit the jackpot so to speak cool i guess it's gonna do a little happy dance <laughs> and uh yeah and jump into the uh pile of clothing and stuff and roll around in it cool um <laughs> So this one's a little bit more morbid, and I apologize to John in advance. Oh, no! Yeah, you start pulling these clothes out, and you're trying stuff on, and you find this really soft scarf. <gasps> Just this super soft scarf, and you go to wrap it around your neck, and you look in the mirror that's next to you, and you see that it's made of a cat, and that it kind of looks... Uh, you're a tabby, right, John? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a tabby cat uh, fur coat. And you have the sudden realization that maybe this is your friend Chester. Mm -hmm. And as you have that realization, make another intelligence saving throw. <sighs> Fuck a duck. Okay. And what you have seen out here, Artie and Chester, is... Uh, you see it kind of jump over towards uh, next to Chester and has Chester's tail uh, <laughs> kind of pulled and wrapped around her neck. Uh, uh. It's that one person at the party who can't handle their acid. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, another 11. You don't have any intelligence modifiers to add? So? No, I'm stupid. Oh, oh, no. No, you're not stupid. You're just not as smart as the rest of us. Yeah, I got another um, yeah, eleven. So, so yeah, so you have that realization, and then you just sort of shrug it off like it's no big deal. Like, oh, that's weird. But now he'll always be with me. <laughs> oh my gosh! I like how it doesn't, I guess, feel anything for this. Okay. Well, this is all because it's 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 all magical manipulation. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. Vora, you're in this uh, you're in this hall with your people. Um, you're being proclaimed the hero of uh, the Erds and the Kobolds. They're all feasting and drinking to your to your honor and your your glory. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I'm going to join in the festivities by taking up a glass and being like, "Yeah, I'm awesome." You take up a, a drink. You start drinking with your with your new friends, Artie and Chester. You look over and you see Vora just lifting his arm in, in a drinking motion to do that. And uh, yeah, uh, in this vision that you're having, uh, Vora, you're you're starting to kind of mix in with the Erds and the Kobolds that are, that are here. And you look down and you suddenly see that all the Erds are in chains. And then you realize that they're not really wearing clothes so much as they're wearing rags or just sort of whatever scraps they can be given. And you have this realization that maybe you didn't unite them so much as make them your subjects. Um, oh no. And with that, go ahead and make another intelligence saving throw. Fuck. Eight. Oh god. We some dumb bitches. <laughs> yeah, you're you're uh <laughs> you you continue drinking though and don't let it bother you. Ebris, you are back in your lonely monastery looking over the calm seas. What do you do? He's going to plan uh, after his upcoming sermon for the few lonely travelers who've uh, come through port. 
uh, he's going to meet up with his master, Althrin, and they're going to do their nightly uh, sparring ritual in order to appease the storms. Cool. Sure. Yeah, you come out into the courtyard ready for your nightly sparring ritual, and there's Arthrin. Uh, he's ready to go. Does he also wield a hammer? Is is your uh, is your whole uh, priesthood just obsessed with war hammers? Or uh, yeah, I'm gonna say hammers. They're just the most efficient at transferring thunder. Sure, totally. And he's he's ready to go. And you guys engage in a little fighting. Um, on the outside, Chester and Artie, you see Eberus just start swinging wildly, swinging his hammer around just all over this room. And this is all happening simultaneously, by the way. So, like, it's a lot of just movement back and forth and just wild actions. And this robed figure is just standing there kind of looking amused. Um, Chester is going to uh, real quick lean over to Artie and go, um, what's going on? Uh, there'd be a bit, a bit of magic affecting them. Hopefully they get over it in a minute, or this is going to be a very, uh, very quick fight. Okay, well that 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 explains a a, a thing or two. Ebris, back to you real quick. The fight's been going on for a while. Suddenly your master knocks your hammer out of your arm or out of your hand and pushes you to the ground, and just begins striking you in the chest, trying to break your plate. And this is not something that he would normally do. Normally it's friendly sparring. It's not. This is totally out of character for him. He looks almost vicious in his uh, demeanor. And so I'll have you make another intelligence saving throw. And that's another nine. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez. Shit. <laughs> we'll get uh, out yeah. of this one day. Yeah, one day. <laughs> Um, yeah, he keeps uh, he keeps striking you now, and you are you are pinned by him, and you just feel like you almost feel like your your armor is going to crack. On the outside, what you guys are seeing is that Eberus has now fallen on his back, and he's striking himself in his chest in his chest armor with his hammer. <laughs> oh. Stop hitting yourself! Stop hitting yourself! But also, oh, never mind. You're not a turtle. What am I thinking about? I was thinking about the turtle when I was going to <laughs> This robed figure says, uh, I can let you guys go, but uh, you'll need to return to the surface and just await. Await the proper time. Soon, Menzerig the Great Hunger will be here, and you won't have anything to worry about anymore. I, uh, just you saying that gives me an awful lot to worry about. So if it's alright with you, I think we're gonna stick this one out. Uh, let's do a ray of frost, I guess. Um, sure, yeah. Go ahead and roll your, is that a attack or a saving throw? That's an attack roll. Okay. Cool, so that's a 9 plus 7 is a 16 to hit. Uh, high or low? High. Uh, 75, good call. Okay, roll damage. Heck yeah. So, uh, can we see this guy clearly? Well, I, I can't, obviously, but... You three can't. Chester and Artie, you just see a hooded... You see that hooded, robed mage that all those statues are made out of. Um, but his hood is pulled really close to his face right now, so um, you can't quite make out his face. That's ten. Ten damage? damage? Yep. Nice. Um, this is ten feet of movement speed. Nice. Perfect. Um, yeah, so a... Artie's just kind of testing the waters as he launches his hammer up to launch a quick beam at him. See what happens. Sure. Um, well, I'm going to make a constitution saving throw, so... Ha! <laughs> <laughs> that and that one. Yeah. <laughs> you just freeze yeah. this instantly. Boom, headshot. Give me that 100%. Uh, 85%. Um, Ooh. So I'm going to say his magic, this magic he's been weaving on the other uh, four party members here, or three, four, however many, uh, just <laughs> shatters. And he actually is going to take some damage, quite a bit of damage, actually, as the magic almost seems to be, like, rejecting him. Um, oh. Okay, so he's going to take 26 damage on top of that uh, as like this like psychic blast almost like 
jumps from where it was holding all you guys in with this illusion magic. This like this magical blast just like shoots across the room and like hits this guy in the face and does just a big old bunch of damage to him. Uh, with that though, all of you guys are out of your respective illusions and it you wake up to Chester's tail pulled tight around your your neck like a scarf. Vora, you're raising a, your fist up in the air like you're drinking. And Eberus, you wake up prone on the ground, your hammer kind of like clutched close to your chest like it just got done hitting you. And this robed figure's hood falls back as it takes this damage. Is everyone from Trico except Vora? Yeah, I think so. Well, yeah. um, Eberus is originally from that uh, the middle one, the one that's split in two. Oh, okay. Still, you've been in Trico a while, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so everyone except uh, Vora, you would recognize this as um, AMR Tornala. He's the high priest of District 73, and currently he's the elected head of the Council of Priests. But his face looks really strange. Uh, He seems to have like a bluish-white tinge to his skin around his face, Uh, and he staggers back as he takes this damage, and Yeah, I think it's time to roll initiative. Thank you for listening to our show. For more content, including world maps, cast info, or additional podcasts, check out our website, oneuppodcasts.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at AreWeDeadYetPod and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash AreWeDeadYetPodcast. Intro and outro music composed by Salty Dog Company. Find them on SoundCloud by searching for Salty Dog Co. Spell dog, D-A-W-G. Background music and ambience provided by TabletopAudio.com under an attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license from Creative Commons. TabletopAudio.com really brings your games to life and is perfect for both adding in that background music to a podcast or for live sounds during gameplay to increase immersion. Check them out at tabletopaudio.com. Cover art by Ashley Steinke. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode of the show. Bye!